French Montana grew up in the projects of the Bronx and hustled his way out of the streets. But before his career popped off, he almost died after getting shot in the head by one of his friends. This is the wild story of how French Montana was set up and shot, then beat a murder case after the shooter was killed. French Montana was born in Casablanca, Morocco, and lived there till he was around 13. In the mid-90s, he came to the U.S. with his parents and younger brother, and they eventually moved to the South Bronx. When he got to America, he spoke very low English, but quickly picked it up in the streets and in high school. Even though he grew up in a totally different part of the world, French always had a passion for rap, so it didn't take long for him to adapt to the culture. But life at home wasn't easy. About two years after moving to America, his dad moved back to Morocco. It was harder to find work than he thought, and he was tired of struggling to make ends meet. French's mom was pregnant at the time and didn't want to bring the kids back to Africa. So, French stayed with his mom and brothers while his dad went back to his home country. With three kids to feed and no father in the house, his mom had to go on welfare. So, French decided he needed to bring in money. It wasn't easy for a kid from Morocco without many skills to make a living. So French jumped off the porch and started hustling in the streets to help his mom put food on the table. Around the same time, he also started getting involved in the local battle rap scene. He used to battle under the name Young French, which is when he started performing and pushing his own music. Along with his friend Cams, French also started a video series called Cocaine City, which was inspired by the popular Smack DVD series. They would interview upcoming artists, street personalities, and give commentary on the music industry and hip-hop beat. Plus, he would also include his own music and footage of his shows and battles to help get his name out there. But this was before the internet, so French and Cams would have to hustle the actual DVDs on street corners. Cocaine City was a huge hit and became one of the top selling street DVDs in New York. He had a team of his childhood friends who were helping him run the business, including his homies Brock, Troop Pop, and Cheese, who eventually became known as the Coke Boys. Cocaine City ran from 2002 to 2010 and helped put French on the map in the New York hip hop scene. But right as his career was starting to take off, French Montana faced a major setback after he was set up and almost killed after a late night studio session. In an old interview with Vlad TV, French described exactly how it went down. One night in 2003, he was at a recording studio on 133rd Street and 3rd Avenue in the Bronx. The studio was in a sketchy area under a bridge that leads directly to Harlem. French parked up near the bridge and went in to record, but he didn't realize there was a snake in his group. Someone in his circle gave away his location to some dudes who were looking for him. So they were already waiting when he came down from the studio. When they got outside and saw two dudes with guns, he knew exactly what was going on. But he was also rolling deep and his homies were all strapped. So French stood his ground and didn't run. One of the attackers tried to hit him, but they ended up wrestling, which led to a shootout. French was hit in the crossfire and had to be rushed to Lincoln Hospital, where he was treated for a gunshot wound to the head. French easily could have been killed or left with permanent brain damage. But the way the bullet traveled in and out of the skull, it didn't hit anything important. So. Even though he spent several weeks in the hospital, he eventually made a full recovery. But before he could enjoy a second chance at life, French would wake up in the hospital only to find out that he was being charged with murder. It turned out that the dude who shot him was also killed in the crossfire. Guns were fired on both sides, and the police weren't sure who was at fault and why they were beefing in the first place. So they launched an investigation, and French was officially charged with homicide. Being charged with a murder you didn't commit is probably the worst way to wake up from getting shot in the head. But then French got extremely lucky after all the charges were dropped. Basically, police couldn't find any evidence that French and his crew started the shootout. It turns out that the victim was killed by his own friend who shot him by mistake while aiming at French. So the death was considered friendly fire and all the charges were dropped. After he was released from the hospital, French learned the truth about what had happened that night. He found out that he wasn't the victim of a random robbery and that a close friend had actually set everything up. Years later, during an appearance on Sway's universe, French Montana revealed one of the most shocking details about the whole situation. The person that set me up, the one that drove me to the hospital. So your greatest threat always comes from the inside. They put staples in my head, bitch, they've been tried. He even talked about it on his song called Blue Chills, where he raps about that night saying, the person that set me up is the one that drove me to the hospital. Your greatest threat always comes from the inside. They put stables in my head, bitch, they've been tried. French hasn't talked to the homie who set him up, and nobody knows what happened to him after the shooting. Getting snaked out by your own friend and catching a headshot is a tough situation, but French didn't let it slow him down. After getting out of the hospital, French got right back to making music and hustling DVDs. 
He started getting into the mixtape game in 2007 with the release of his first project, Excuse My French. He even started his own label, Coke Boy Records, in 2008 and dropped his first breakout single, Choppa Choppa Down, in 2010. Since then, French has worked with all the biggest names in music, from Drake to Rick Ross. So, who knows what would have happened if that bullet hit him a few inches in another direction and ended his career before it really took off. Recently, French has been outspoken against gun violence in the hip hop community. When Bronx rapper Lil TJ was shot in attempted robbery last year, French gave an interview with TMZ where he explained why so many rappers keep getting shot. He said, now We got the hardest job. You don't know where it comes from, man. We think that everybody loves us, but everybody don't love us. Most people think that famous artists have the easiest job in the world, but French knows that fame comes with a price, and even your own homies might be waiting to stab you in the back. Even though he's trying to change his life, French still can't escape the violence and he's been in a few other wild situations since then. In 2013, his tour bus was ambushed after a show in Philadelphia. He had just finished a show at the Theater of Living Arts and a group of fans followed him and his entourage back to their Holiday Inn Hotel. A large crowd forms in the parking lot, which is when someone pulls up in a black car and starts letting off shots. French was still on the bus with Meek Mill when the shots were going off and neither of them were hit but 26-year-old Joanna King was shot in the stomach and later died in the hospital. Another victim, 28-year-old Granville Thompson, was also hit in the shoulder but recovered. Police later booked 20-year-old Frank Briggs for the shooting and hit him with murder, attempted murder, aggravated assault, and other charges. French Montana later told media that he didn't know the victim, but he gave condolences to the family. It's unclear whether or not the shooting had anything to do with French Montana or Meek Mill, but it was another close call. Then, almost 10 years later, French had another crazy close call after his release party in Miami was shot up, leaving 10 people injured. In early 2023, French was turning up to celebrate the release of his new track, Igloo, with rappers Rob Fo9 and Seth Mogul. They were at the Lincoln restaurant in Miami Gardens when out of nowhere, shots started popping off in the parking lot. According to police, a fight broke out in a different location that spilled into the area, which led to the shots. The shooting left 10 people injured, including Rob Fo9 but luckily, no one died. At first, it was reported they were filming a music video. The police claimed French did not apply for proper permits and that he just rolled up to the spot and started filming. So, the cops say they weren't able to provide enough security for the event. They even put out a statement on Twitter where they called it a senseless tragedy that could have been prevented if they were given notice. The statement said, if the necessary agencies were notified ahead of time and protocol followed, police officers would have been in place to safeguard the community and assist with deterring and responding, if needed, to any situation that may arise. After the news broke, French Montana put out his own statement on Twitter, claiming it was just the wrong place, wrong time situation. He tweeted, Last night, I was in Miami celebrating the release of my CB6 mixtape with friends at a local restaurant. We unfortunately were at the wrong place at the wrong time when the incident took place that left people hurt. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and families at this time. CED Mogul also told NBC6 News that the shooting happened after somebody got robbed for a Rolex and someone else got robbed for their car keys and phone. At first, they were behind a local KFC where the robbery happened, but moved to the parking lot of the Lickin, which is where the shots went off. A few months after the shooting, Rob Fonan cleared up a few details about what went down that night. He told Hip Hop DX they weren't planning on filming a music video, which is why they didn't have much security. They were just kicking it but wanted to perform a new song for the fans. He said, We were just chilling and we wanted to perform the song and shit and celebrate because it was dropping that night. So we just went to turn up with him. I saw that it was a music video and I was like, alright, I'm not even about to clear that shit up. So they just showed up to have a good time, but some people in the crowd got into it and ruined the vibe for everyone else. Luckily no one was killed. But many people were injured, and Rob Fo9 was even seen on Instagram rocking a sling a few weeks after it happened. French Montana has had a lot of close calls throughout his life, and no matter how successful he gets, he still can't seem to escape the drama. From getting set up by a close friend, to being in the middle of a mass shooting over a Rolex and some car keys, French has been through it all. But hopefully, it's taught him to change up how he moves so he can stay out of these situations in the future.